having a couple of uh, people with interest. So this means we start our lunch and learn session, uh, episode 15, setting up a mesh Wi-Fi net network with Grandstream APs. <clears throat> My name is Sass and I guide you through this training. We have a look at the agenda. In the agenda, we go first to look at the terminology, um, the requirements, the topology, the, uh, how to make or what to look at when we do a survey. Then we quickly look at building a mesh network from a theoretical perspective. And then we spend the most of the time on a hands-on building a mesh network then we look also on how to build up the, topo up the topology as a typo inside there. And then uh, we look at the hidden secret that is actually required to make it all work. Um, so this means you have to stay until the end if you want to know how, it, how to make it work. Um, the terminology is quite simple. We only use access points in the whole setup. A um, couple of those access points, or at least one access point, which is the CAP, has access to the wired network. Um, all the other access points we turn into REs, which are range extenders. The CAP is the central access point, and the range extenders are connected to the central access point via mesh links. From the range extenders, then we can have the devices connected, notebooks, mobile phones, tablets, whatever, and they are connected to uh, with a yeah, normal Wi-Fi connection, which is called service link in the um, Grandstream manual. So that's literally fairly straightforward. The requirements are uh, the following devices have to be available. So GWN 7610, 760, 760LR, 7630, and so on. Um, they all have to have the firmware lined out as in the slide here. And of course, it's a benefit if you update them to the latest firmware. Be aware of that the GWN7602 can only be used as a range extender, which is at the end of a chain. You can't attach further uh, range extenders to that device. It's a pretty basic device. Um, looking at the topology, we see that we can have chain mesh. This is usually uh, used to overcome long distances. So we have the, the, the central access point here, and then we literally extend the range of his um, Wi-Fi signal. It is in regards of the throughput. We look at that then afterwards also um, when we come to the next slide. It is advised to not go further than three levels, else you have not enough uh, bandwidth here at the far end. Um, we can also use a star mesh, which means we have the central access point in the middle, and then we add in a star way range extenders around the central access point. And of course, there can be also here one, there can be here one. It all comes down to how big that area is that you need to cover. And um, then we can do a hierarchical mesh, which has more or less the central access point also somewhere in the center or in a corner or somewhere. And then it is literally a 
combination between a chain and a star mesh. You see here we have more or less two REs together, which then again go further out. You can also have more or less the, the two REs can also be like this here. And then from here on, we go out to others. So this can also be possible. It's literally a combination of whatever you want. Again, make sure that you do not go, if possible, above the three levels of uh, range extenders. To actually be able to, 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 to create a functional mesh network, we have to do the same like we have to do for every network, Wi-Fi network. When we build it up, we have to do a survey. Um, the survey should focus on the signal overlap so that we make sure that the access points actually can communicate with each other. The signal strength in the covered areas so that we are not going under a certain signal uh, strength if we want to have the area fully covered. Then the overall coverage and signal strength so that we have all the areas covered which we want to have covered and inside those areas a acceptable signal strength. Then the minimum signal strength we want to, to have throughout the whole install that we do not have a bad signal somewhere where we want to have a signal. And then also, how can I achieve that all with what radio power? The more radio power we use, the bigger the cell is, the less access points slash REs we need, the more possible clients we cover in that cell, which means the less bandwidth per client. It's logical, the more people who use the Wi-Fi is, the less each has um, in data amount uh, available. The less power, the less radio power we, we use, the smaller the cell is, the more access points, uh, range extenders we need, the less possible clients we have, which means more bandwidth per client. So it comes down uh, to what your customer really wants. Of course, uh, the one with the less radio power where you use more access points uh, is also then the more cost intensive because you literally need more access points. Then we look at the maximum amount of cascading levels when we do a service, a survey. Again, it's advised to do only three levels to do the drop of throughput. And then we also look on the mounting height. It is advised to not have more than four meters mounting height. Um, this all can be seen in the deployment guide in, and in the GWN76 mesh guide. Um, the deployment guide literally gives you an insight to do a site survey for every Wi-Fi network that you have to set up. And the Wi-Fi network, the, the network-based one, so where the access points are connected to a live network, is in the end, from a Wi-Fi perspective, not so much different than the one with the mesh network because the access points literally have to overlap each other's area in both of those networks. Looking now on how we have to create a mesh network is the following way to go. We take all, after we did the survey, we take all the access points that we want to um, provision. We take them into our local network. We put them into the network so that they all can be seen. We log into the access point which we will define as the master access point and we connect all future range extenders as slaves to that master 
then we configure the range extenders by giving them a name so that we actually know where that device is located when we look at the um, master later on. Um, we also do additional uh, configuration in regards of uh, up and down link speed for each RE if that is required. We then also can um, set the strength of the radio power if that is something that we want to uh, define. And then also we ensure that all REs are a part of the SSID. Once that all is done, we go to the system settings of the master, we activate the mesh network on the master. The access points more or less are getting provisioned then with the mesh network activation. And then we take each single access point and mount them there where they have to be, and then we just wait. It takes quite some time until they are all back up again and all registered and um, can be seen on the master as wireless devices. Um, we do that now in a hands-on. I did that uh, previously. There is a recording that we look now. We log into the master using admin and the password that is available on the sticker on the back. We define that he is the master and we sign in. We skip the setup wizard and then wait because the page is actually Reloading again. We then find the mouse. And once we have the mouse, we go into access points configuration. Some people, oh yeah, first, sorry. First, we actually make sure that we do firmware update on the master on the system maintenance, and then we go into the access point and um, check for the available devices. We go to discover access points, and then we see the unlinked devices. In this case, they're all 7615s, um, already all on the latest firmware, so we don't have to do an update there. We take over and then we go back. You see now they are getting all provisioned. They're offline and they will come back up again in a couple of seconds. You see they are all up now. We go. They are all uh, cable connected. They have all very, very similar uh, channels. Say something to that afterwards. And here I set the radio power on low because I did that on in my environment. And if I have it on 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 strong, it will not really work. So if I put that in low, I get quite a good. Um, coverage where the access points, yeah, really can 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 hand over and work together when they are distributed about the area. So that's something what you have to look when you do a survey. I can also do it high on 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 my place, but then I only need one access point. So from that perspective, I cannot really show that uh, very well when I have the radio power on high. Once all the settings are applied, 
we go back into the configuration of the access points. And we see now that they have not shown us any channels. So now, I was looking a little bit on, of course, for preparing that uh, webinar. I was looking a little bit around on uh, GrantStream information channels and all that stuff. And it's actually advised on the GrantStream uh, guides that you set all the channels on each access point, you use a different channel. We do that here. However, later on, you will see that on 5G, which we use on the mesh network, they all revert back to the same channel. You will see that then afterwards. So from that perspective, not really sure why they line out that you should use the same uh, different channels. And when in the end, they actually then um, send all access points again into the same channel. It makes sense that, that since it is uh, to have them all in the same channel because it's literally the um, it's an extension of 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 the uh, central access point. So from that perspective, it makes sense. But then I don't understand why they line out in the internet that you have to change the channels. Um, quickly, I always have to sneak peek which device name I have to use. Then I quickly set this one on the master. Then that it's done, then we apply that quickly. You will see the access points then come up with nicely with those uh, channels that I defined for them, takes a second, and then they're all coming up and uh, you will see how they change the channels. Go to zero now. And we see on the right side that they're still, yeah, they're still use with the cable. You see they have taken over their channels now. And that's more or less what we do in terms of configuration. We go into the mesh now system, mesh, and we enable the mesh. You see I have there the wireless cascades on three. We can go up, but GrandStream advises to not use more wireless cascades than three levels. Go back into the access points and they will now um, be handed around in the house. So I take them now out of the um, active network and place them there where they actually 
have to be. So you see the dining room is offline, the kitchen one is offline, and the study is offline. They are now placed at the spot where they belong to, fired up. And this goes roughly between five to eight minutes. I, I, I shrinked that time now there. Um, goes roughly between eight and yeah, 10 minutes or five and 10 minutes until they literally all um, or each single one comes up. And you see on the right side between the link and the SSH icon, the cable. A uh, connection is gone, and in the status, they are lined out as online and wireless. The study is the last one to come up, was also the one that was the furthest away, but generally that should not really make a difference. So they're all up and connected now. I think that is finished with the running. So we go to the next slide now. No, we are not finished yet, not finished yet. We come to look at the topology, yeah. So we go into the topology. And we see the master there, and then we see all the access points now assigned to the master, and they're all directly assigned. So that's literally a star topology now. But we want to have a different topology. We want to have the study connected to the kitchen then. We see here, we have already one client registered to the um, network that was by the kitchen access point. There was one client registered. So I always say access point now, it's actually the range extender. So it was not assigned to the master, it was assigned to the range extender in the kitchen. Now, you can change the SSID to whatever you want. You don't have to take the default one. And in the end there, we saw that literally the access points all are in the same um, SSID group. So from that perspective, everything is working fine and smooth. Now, as I said before, we use a start topology at the moment. So all these range extenders are directly connected to the um, master. But what I wanted because of the signal weakness of the one that is located in the study, I want this one to be connected to the access point, which is the closest to it, which is the one in the kitchen. So now we look on how achieving this. We go into system mesh and then again, we see that we have those access points uh, in a star and the study actually has a very, very low RSS ID. And it's directly connected to the master. I want it to be connected to the kitchen. to get a much better signal. We quickly update the uplinks again to see if not something better is in the area. No, that's it. We save it and we apply it. Go into the mesh and at the moment it's empty because they are getting 
provisioned again. You see the study is offline because the study is literally getting provisioned now via the kitchen. You see, we have a provisioning status there. It's just always takes a little bit time. And now we see it's online again. This means we can go back into the system, into the mesh and see what the topology now is. And we see we have an access point attached to the kitchen, which is the study. Yeah. And also there we see then that the study has an RSSI for, of uh, 66 and not of 80 anymore like before. Now, there is one crucial um, knowledge that you have to have when you build up such a mesh network. You have to use PoE adapters. There is no way that you will get this working when you think you have a big area that you have to cover like a warehouse and what else ever, and you have a switch somewhere, um, a PoE switch, and you plug in more than one REs into the same PoE switch, this is not gonna work. The REs, the uh, access points from Grandstream, they actually realize if there is traffic coming uh, from the switch to the access point. And once traffic comes from the access point to the, uh, from the switch to the access point, the device will not go into RE mode. I've tested that here. I had a switch standing here without connection to the active network, but with two range extenders connected into it, nothing else, just two range extenders or two access points that were the, uh, 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 configured as range extenders, they will not connect to the um, master. One, the one that comes up first will connect, however, from time to time, we, he will disconnect again and then reconnect and then disconnect again. The second one that comes up will never ever connect. So it is very, very clear that you have to use PoE adapters. It makes sense in a way because you mount them in an area where you would say, I have no network there. But you can't literally say I have a remote building where I have on the outside a long reach access point and on the inside I have a normal access point and I mount behind them a PoE switch that should feed them both. And then you wonder why this is not working. It is not working because these access points, they also send uh, requests out. And these requests will then, of course, via the switch go to the other access point. And this is traffic that is received and therefore the access point will not turn into RE mode. So whenever you try to set up such, such a mesh network, only use PoE adapters. Also, Grandstream advises to have the RAs as much as possible in a visu visual line distance with few obstructions as possible so that the um, Wi-Fi 
distanced Wi-Fi link is not disturbed by um, walls that are in the way and, and, and these things, because that will drop then again the throughput significantly. And since we already rely on uh, a signal that gets weak more or less towards the end when we use a daisy chain, then it makes sense that you mount them as much as possible without any walls in between or stuff like that. That's it. Um, I hope this was a good insight into the Grand Stream Mesh Network. If you have any questions, please place them now. Just quickly, Remo. Um, so in regards to the to that kind of last slide where you're talking about you know, needing to use um, POE adapters to power these devices. So the, the main thing to kind of um, look out for here is that you can't connect these REs to your corporate network. They have yeah. to be totally eliminated from the corporate network and yeah. they also cannot be connected to each other. So the REs can't be connected to each other via a physical cable either. They all have to, they can only talk to each other and communicate wirelessly with each yeah. other. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's literally as soon as they receive traffic over the network cable, that is literally powering them up but because they have no power supply unit support. So they need uh, to be fed via POE and that cable literally has to be dead. So there is no traffic. If you use, the, if you use a, a basic POE switch with only that device attached to it, nothing else plugged into that switch, it works. You can use a switch absolutely um, a five port PoE switch or what else ever um, with just that device attached to it to fire it up, this works. So there is literally no traffic coming from the switch, but as soon as something else is plugged into that switch, the RE compatibility of the access point is turned off and it turns into a normal access point. And of course, since that switch then has no connection to the other network, yeah, the, 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 the access point will just go down. So, yeah, so it has to be, and as we saw in the videos, when they are connected to an active network, they will be shown up on the master as cable connected. And of course you could say now, um, I extend that Wi-Fi link from the master over there using that RE and plug it in in another building, which has another corporate network. And just since it is not registered in that other corporate network, I just want it to be fired up using the PoE from that switch. It will not work because again, it receives traffic from that other corporate network. It will turn off the RE um, capability. So from that perspective, the best advice is when you want to build a network, always use a PoE adapter. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> so just another quick question. So in regards to mesh networks, I know it wasn't covered today, but from what I understand, you can also um, utilize a standard kind of master slave network also in conjunction with a mesh network. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I actually had that during my test. I did uh, abuse my home network. And uh, as you can see, I go quickly back in a couple of slides. I hope I can show you that in the other movie here. Um, can I jump in here or can I not? Because the you reason see, I ask I is I've, I've had I've had customers um, in the past where they've you know they've they've kind of got network points throughout their their building where they can run a standard master slave network, but then they've got an open warehouse where they can't run cables where they yep. want to just use a mesh network for that yep. 
part of the what, install. What, what, what I realized when I, during my setup here, when I was doing that um, uh, setup, you can only set the mesh network generally on the master. So there is no way that you can say, I set it now on a certain SSID. So this means that all access points try to connect to the master in a regular frequency and literally the Wi-Fi network goes down in those moments. So I was actually having the access point, which is close to my bedroom. I was on my bed having the phone, my, 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 my phone in my hand surfing. When the, 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 the access point, when I see the access point, the lights turn yellow. And I, I, I didn't have that prior. And then I thought, What's, why, why are they going yellow? And then they turn blue again. And they, they after, after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they turn yellow again. And I Googled what yellow means. And this is when the device goes into mesh um, connection mode. So it is, it is something that you uh, create on the master for more or less all, all SSIDs. So you do, because on the master, you can't just say, um, you do it on the, on that or that mesh network. That might be a feature request that, that we can hand in that they actually do that, but you do it globally. So mm. it, I mean, I was not going further to, I, I turned it off then and, and, and it solved it. So I was not going further to investigate. It might be that somewhere you can, you can, you can do that. We can look that up, but in, perhaps, in, in, perhaps what you can do is you can have that one master for your slave network, but then configure another master for the mesh network, maybe? Yeah, that would be. Anyway, we'll again, have to would, look at that. We'll have to investigate further. You would, you would have to look for, for then you would have to have two masters in the network, but still okay. that's, that's, that's possible. Um, again, as of now, it is, going over the whole network that you, that you have. So the whole master slave architecture is um, yeah, undergoing this mesh setup, mesh, mesh uh, configuration. And this means then all access points in that, in that, in that area or, uh, on that, which are connected to that master are literally trying to reconnect to the mesh. And in that moment, you lose Wi-Fi connectivity on the attached devices. Okay. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Anyone else questions? You're allowed to talk, Paul. If I'm muting, yeah, there we go. Um, I'm just wondering, I, I popped into this a bit late. Um, would I be able to catch a replay, do you think? That will be up on our YouTube channel, most likely beginning next week. Okay, cool. It might be quicker, Paul. I might have it up later today or tomorrow if we're, yeah, if we can. I'll see how we go. I've got, I'm trying to troubleshoot. This is a problem I've got. This customer, they've got um, a ubiquity and, and uh, they, they, want, they want some more Wi-Fi throughout their home and um, they don't want to do away with ubiquity because the, the husband uses it. He's quite happy with it. But uh, he's, he's, I'm just wondering, is, is it possible to, to install a couple of grand streams and and include the ubiquity in the networking of the grand streams, or is that is that a bit silly to try to mix and match? I, I yeah, I don't think you can. I think there's there's still proprietary information that allows yeah. the master and slaves to talk each, talk to each other. Mm. I don't think you can you can include that into the I, same I, network. 
Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would say that probably the, the 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 biggest the biggest block there is from the ubiquity side because they they uh, they are um, pretty much. I also have ubiquity access points here, but um, they they more are, are are trying to keep everything to their end. Um, mm. But. Uh, also, Grandsteam wouldn't recognize it. On the other hand, Grandsteam only recognizes um, devices with with Grandstream back addresses. So, and from yeah, that addresses. perspective, yeah. So, so I forget. You, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I also wouldn't do it uh, if you want to run into troubles and you want you like to troubleshoot. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, what yeah. you can probably do though, Paul, is just add a couple of grand trip access points and run them side by side with yeah. different SSIDs. Yeah, that's it. Look, I, I did put in um, tender mesh units and they proved to not work. They're not working like we wanted. Um, she's dropping out upstairs in the, you know, so so they're probably going to get um, pulled out and I'll find another customer for them. And But I still have to resolve the issue for her and... It's a four-story home, goes up the side of the hill. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I'll just go there with a few of these and and uh, yeah. just uh, the POEs that, that we use for them. Um is there a proprietary one or can I just get no. any old one? Or... I used I, I used the yelling ones that we have. Yeah. Um, what I realized, as I said, I have Ubiquiti. They are very special. They Ubiquiti access point. I realized will not fire up with a with a um, general PoE. Um, uh, Ubiquiti use twenty four volts, where and, the standard PoE is forty eight. Yeah, and then and then yeah, you can't run anything on. So that that you would you would have to swap. But generally, the grand streams. They are because Grandstream doesn't have their own uh, PoE adapter, so they have to rely on the standard ones. And yeah, so I used the, the Yearlink ones from our from our warehouse, and yeah, they they did the job. Okay, I'll just have a look. or any standard PoE switch, Paul, will work fine. It's not the switch because what you've said here is um, you got to oh, have sorry, a PoE. using mesh. Yeah, if you're using mesh, sorry, if you're using a mesh yeah. network, then you need to use a PoE injector, correct? Yeah. So on, on your side, on the alloy side, if what do I do? Am I going to look at Yaylink? Go for the YL PoE30. I'm looking at the side here. They're probably at the moment not in stock because three are on my end, but they yeah. should come in back to the office by um, uh, next yeah, week. I'll check quickly now. Is any in stock? There were five. There were five available when I when I got them from. What was the, the code? What, sorry, boys. YL. Um, uh, y, YLPOE thirty. There's one in stock. POE With more 30. coming end of the month. Yeah, and I have three. They go back to the warehouse as soon as as, uh, as that stuff is finished. I see it. Yeah. Okay. So that's sixty four. Yeah. Log that's in. retail price. Yeah, it might be less when I log in. I'm not logged in. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thirty nine. Okay, and you've got some stock. All right. Yeah, definitely four. I have three here. One in the warehouse, and yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Righto. Well, I'll, I'll go have a chat with um with her, and I'll I'll watch this replay when it comes up. Cool. Any other questions? Doesn't seem to be the case in that regard. I would say um, we end this webinar and we see us then in two weeks when we look into the deployment of Yearlink uh, W8090 multi cell systems.
This one then is hosted or presented by Remo. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Take care and stay safe. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.